Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we are delighted that you've welcomed us into your home, and today is going to be a very special show. You know that we would love to hear from you, so please send us your email with your question or your comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And this is Pro-Life Month in the month of October, and we're excited to have with us Father Ben Cameron. Now, Father Ben is a missionary priest with the Fathers of Mercy, and he has been involved in healing after abortion ministry with Rachel's Vineyard Retreats since 2004, and is the author of a beautiful book that I highly recommend to you, Healing the Deepest Wounds, A Pastoral Guide to Abortion, Trauma, and Grief. And this beautiful book is available at EWTNRC.com. And I highly recommend it to all pregnancy help centers throughout the world to empower your staff, all of the people that work there that are answering the telephone, no matter what they're doing, just so that will, it would enrich them <clears throat> to be better healers, to be better listeners, to be better in the understanding of those men and women who have been injured in their body, mind, and spirit from the poor life choice to have an abortion. It's a book to equip God's people for the work of the ministry. Yes. I wanted to read from uh, the uh, document Evangelium Vitae, The Gospel of Life by John Paul II. Paragraph 99, he says these words. I would now like to say a special word to women who have had an abortion. The church is aware of the many factors which may have influenced your decision. And she does not doubt that in many cases it was a painful and even shattering decision. The wound in your heart may not yet have healed. Certainly what happened was and remains terribly wrong. But do not give in to discouragement. Do not lose hope. Try rather to understand what happened and face it honestly. If you've not already done so, give yourselves over with humility and trust to repentance. The Father of mercies is ready to give you his forgiveness and his peace in the sacrament of reconciliation. To the same Father and to his mercy, you can with sure hope entrust your child. With the friendly and expert help and advice of other people, and as a result of your own painful experience, you can be among the most eloquent defenders of everyone's right to life. Through your commitment to life, whether by accepting the birth of other children or by welcoming and caring for those most in need of someone to be close to them, you will become promoters of a new way of looking at human mm -hmm. life. Amen. It's in this hope that we have <laughs> this show today, if you can call it a show, but ministering the healing grace and mercy of the Lord, his truth and his mercy, because truth is a person in Jesus Christ. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, we are excited to have with us again Father Ben Cameron. Now, he is a missionary priest with the Fathers of Mercy, and he has been involved in healing after abortion ministry with Rachel's Vineyard Retreats since 2004. In the, and he's authored a beautiful book that we highly recommend, Healing the Deepest Wounds, a Pastoral Guide to Abortion, Trauma, and Grief. And this great book is available at EWTN rc.com. Well, Father, the book is wonderful. We highly recommend it. What is your hope with this book? I mean, you, you talk about the spiritual wounds, 
the emotional wounds, and I know that we're also going to talk about the traumatic experience that a woman has. And you talk has. about equipping people. So mm -hmm. you're doing multiple things here, right. it seems. So when I originally decided to write the book, my original target audience was my brother priest. I wanted to help my brother priest to know better how to handle it when somebody comes with an abortion wound. But then as I was writing it, it's like, okay, not just priests, but right. anybody in ministry, pro-life ministry, church ministry, um, Christian counselors. Um, and then as I was completing it, it's like, I, it really, it can help anybody who is accompanying somebody who's suffering from abortion. So I didn't really write it so much for those who've had abortions, yeah. There's probably better sources for that, and the best thing, experiential retreat like Rachel's Vineyard, um, which of course I, I love and I do this, this ministry, um, but to really help those who are walking with somebody yes. who has been injured, who's been wounded, um, to know better, to understand better the wounds. Yeah. Um, and one of those we just alluded to is a lot of people who um, have had abortions it was really not their choice. They always say abortion is a woman's choice. It's between a woman and her doctor, but that's not true. Mm. Most of the time, the doctor that does the abortion is not her doctor, doesn't know her from Adam, has never talked to her, doesn't talk to her. He comes in, it's like a factory. Somebody else has prepped her, he comes in, he kills the baby, he moves on to the next client, mm -hmm. you know? So it's not, that a woman and her doctor have sat down and talked about this. And a lot of times she's not even freely making the choice. Um, it may be as many, some studies are showing as many as 70% of women who have abortions are under some level of pressure, coercion, or even outright force. And um, the difference in those pressure, you know, somebody's putting a little on you. You really need to do this. Coercion, a type thing like, if you don't have this, have an abortion, where are you going to live? Mm -hmm. You know, um, how I'm not going to pay for your college mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. You know, that You'll type thing. Your You're going to lose your scholarship. Mm -hmm. You know, you won't be able to fulfill your dreams. You know, we're, they're really putting the screws down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you have people who are outright forced. So women who are trafficked, for example, um, and the, their trafficker forces them to have an abortion. And I've heard of teenage girls that were taken in, her parents arranged it, and the girl is given a drug and she's sedated and aborted against her will. She doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever there is any level of pressure or coercion, or if a woman's told, well, your baby's gonna be malformed or it's gonna die anyway, or its life wouldn't be very good, and Deep down in her heart, she doesn't really want to do this, but she ends up doing it. All of those things add to the trauma that she has from the abortion. And when you consider that, a lot of times the women who have the abortions have already been traumatized. Some of them have suffered sexual abuse. They have suffered molestation. Some of them have suffered sexual assault or rape. And I'm not saying that the pregnancy came about through those things. But if they've already suffered trauma in their earlier life, and then they're pressured or coerced into having the abortion, it deepens the amount of trauma that she suffers in the uh, abortion experience. And yet the mind, as uh, we were talking the other day in the previous uh, show, the mind puts up these walls to protect it from the trauma. It's part of what trauma does. The mind tries to protect yourself from the the horror of what you've experienced. Um, but at some point, the mind can't keep the wall up any longer. Yeah. And then that wall begins to crumble and you're faced with the, the full reality of what's happened. Mm -hmm. And it can be overwhelming. And that's why it's important for a person who is suffering in this way, <clears throat> who, who knows that they've, they, they've had trauma or that they are, have this grief that's been unanswered, to reach out for help. And the first place we want you to come is to the church. And, and I'm hoping to equip the priests and the deacons and the staff and the church to better help you and to, to help people to, um, 
to, to be able to open up and to share their heart. Um, and then I'm also hoping that this book will help them to know what are the ministries out there to help with the emotional healing, to help with healing relationships. Um, so, so in the book, we cover different, you know, should you go to a counselor? Should you, um, there's Bible studies, there's Project Rachel, there's Entering Canaan, there's Rachel's Vineyard. What does each of those ministries do? How do they work? What are the, the, the positives? And none of them are perfect, yeah. but hopefully it will equip those who are accompanying somebody to be able to see this is available and this would be helpful to this person that I care about, that I'm walking in this journey of healing and forgiveness with. Well, because there's been a rupture in her soul, mm -hmm. right? And it, it, it affects her emotionally, psychologically, right. and spiritually. And so tell our family about some of that trauma, how that's going to, if we're not healed, right? Mm -hmm. And we, um, we've already had an abortion in our past. Right. How does that work it out for the next time I come in an unplanned pregnancy? Well, that's exactly the thing. When you have had trauma and it's not been healed, the, sometimes the unplanned pregnancy, it's kind of, it's what we call a traumatic reenactment. Um, so you, you're trying to fix the problem. And unconsciously, so this is not a conscious, willing decision, but unconsciously a person puts themselves back into the same type of situations, trying to fix it. And then they have the unplanned pregnancy and they're still trying to fix it, but they can't fix it. And so then they end up back at Planned Parenthood again. And every time they do, it's deepening the trauma. Um, and so this culture that we've got that says, oh, abortion will just take care of your problems. And, uh, you know, you go in, it's like getting, you know, getting your, uh, a, a tooth pulled or something like that and, and yeah. everything's good. It's a lie. Yeah. It's one of the most egregious lies that people are told. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's not just the women, the men suffer trauma too and grief, sometimes deep, deep grief. Yeah. And a man who has participated in an abortion uh, or tried to stop one but wasn't, couldn't stop it is deeply traumatized in the core of his manhood. Mm -hmm. um, in the core of our manhood, we're supposed to provide and protect. And when a man is not, was not able to provide or protect for the woman he loved or even if it was a he knocked her up, you know, for lack of a better term, he wasn't able to protect his child. That is a tremendous blow to his manhood. Mm -hmm. And um, one of my colleagues in the ministry, and I talk about this in the book, she works in a men's prison doing Rachel's Vineyard retreats. And she said she thinks the majority of the men in that prison are post-abortive. Right. And many of them say that's where their life began to spiral out of control mm -hmm. because, because of that trauma, because it, the trauma to their manhood. And so um, the trauma has to be addressed. It, it's not enough to just say, okay, I know I'm forgiven. We've got to address the underlying hurt. And un addressing that will not only keep from that traumatic reenactment of the unplanned pregnancy and, and abortion cycle, but it also um, gets at the, at the root of, the, of a lot of those wounds and um, and, and helps us to, to avoid the type of situations that would even get us in that. Um, but Jesus doesn't want us to be walking wounded. Right. You know, Jesus wants to heal. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that it will be that we, we don't remember abortion um, and, and the pain that happened and stuff. But we will no longer be literally walking with the bandages <clears throat> on and the, and the wounds bleeding. We can have the wounds be healed and we can be in a place of wholeness. And, and then we are the most effective pro-lifers, voices for the, for the unborn, voices for those who are hurting, um, voices for children, you know, who have been abandoned or neglected and things too. Um, so that's the message is Jesus wants to heal. He wants to heal the grief. He wants to heal the trauma and he can and I just want to encourage everybody who, who watches this and listens to this that 
no matter how wounded they may feel and how like un, unredeemable they might feel, Jesus died on the cross for you. And Jesus wants to pour his precious blood out on you and send his Holy Spirit on you and to heal you because you are precious. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a Jewish, there was an old Jewish rabbinical saying that one soul is of greater weight than an entire universe. Mm -hmm. And that's true for every one of us, no matter what we've done. Mm -hmm. you know? but, but our Lord can heal and he does. And I've, I've worked with people who, they've, some of them have been on my team and, and that have had abortions and some have had multiple abortions. And the healing grace of God and the transform, transformed lives is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, I want to encourage people to, to go make a good confession, pour it all out, don't hold anything back, and then go to Rachel's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. Or if Rachel's Vineyard isn't available, you know, go to Entering Canaan, go to Project Rachel, do a post-abortion Bible study. Mm -hmm. But get help. Because Jesus wants to bring that healing. Amen. And most pregnancy help centers throughout the world also can connect those dots for you. Either they're going to do support after abortion for you in-house, right. or they'll connect a dot as right. to where you can go and, and have that. In fact, the Bible studies are offered at most pregnancy resource mm -hmm. centers. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good starting point. Mm -hmm. um, some people do the Bible study, and then they know they need right. more. Right. And then, you know, Rachel, I think Rachel's Vineyard is the ultimate. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a little biased because I've been doing it for yes. 20 years. But I also see miracles every time I work a retreat. Right. Well, Father, I went on a retreat too, and, and I witnessed four miracles. Yeah. I mean, the way the women just physically looked, the way they were, and then how they left. It, it was, it, it, they were miracles. From Friday evening to Sunday oh, afternoon, yes. the transformation that takes place yes. is out of this world. Mm -hmm. Father, we're going to take a break at this point and hold you over for the final segment. Thank you for all that you're sharing, the way that you're sharing it. The offer is being made to you mm -hmm. of Christ's love for you. And that, that's all the priest could do or the evangelist can do or somebody who's been wounded is trying to to reach out to somebody else, a beggar reaching out to another beggar. You got to take hold now. Do it now. Say, Lord, I don't even know what this is all about, but I believe. I want to be forgiven. I want to be set free. And he'll lead you along the steps. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. you're getting as much out of this time here as Joy and I are getting out of this for numerous reasons. So Father Ben, we're just going to turn it over to you. What's on your heart, your mind for this particular time in relationship to this book, how it might be helpful to a variety of people. I want to, I'm thinking about all the people who are involved in pro-life ministry. Um, and a lot of time we don't understand, and I didn't when I was young, how a person could have an abortion. And we, we wonder, how did they get there? And sometimes we think, how could they be so hard-hearted? And I would encourage you, I think this book will help you understand those questions and understand that it's not out of hard-heartedness, it's out of woundedness. And the more that we can show the compassion of Christ to those who are wounded, the more we're going to be great witnesses to the love of Jesus. You know, even if you're a pro-lifer who's out there trying to do counseling outside an abortion clinic, um, if we can have deeper compassion for where people are and realizing that many of these people who are coming have had deep, deep wounds that have led them to this point and that some of them may be in a cycle of abortion because of this deep woundedness, we could reach out with the love, the compassionate, merciful love of uh, heart of Jesus and help people to break that cycle, help people to, to find healing, to find hope. And yes, we'd save their babies as well, 
but to save the moms, to save the dads, um, because the Lord wants <coughs> us to be to re, be restored and wants people to be restored. And we've got to take our, our attention off of only saving the babies and look at how do we save the moms and dads and bring them to um, to really be the men and women, the fathers and mothers that they're called to be. And our Lord wants to do this. And he wants us to be his hands and his heart in this, in this ministry. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that, that's what's on my heart. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've really done that today. Uncompromisingly pro-life and compassionately pro-life. Clarity, charity. So we're so appreciative. Close us in a prayer Thank with a you, blessing. Father. Lord Jesus, we ask through the intercession of your mm -hmm. most holy mother and of St. Joseph, all the angels and saints, mm -hmm. to watch over all of us, to give us um, the heart, your heart, to bring your compassion, your love to those who are wounded, to all those that we encounter who are suffering from abortion and from other pregnancy loss. And we ask that you bless each of us and all those who watch and who listen to this program in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you Amen. so much. Once again, it's Healing the Deepest Wounds. Go to EW10RC.com. There's so many people that could benefit by this book. We're not just speaking about those who had abortions, but accompanying those that have participated, those who have had abortions. And this whole last segment, Father was speaking about equipping the church, deacons, priests, bishops, the laity that are very involved in the pro-life movement to understand who's coming to you, what's going on, why are they repeat abortions, how, how could people come to this point? And he's giving you a list of items emotionally, psychologically, tra traumatically, the functioning of the brain and what's taking place, that we could be filled with compassion and mercy and, and that we could become mothers and fathers along with father, sisters and brothers, of mercy. He's trying to equip us at this juncture in time to do the work of the ministry. People aren't saved in some kind of vacuum. They're saved in the midst of the culture of death and being set free. This is a work of evangelization in context in this time. Mm -hmm. Keep it on EW10. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now. <laughs>